Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, the comedians that perform here, and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what helps make up our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Dawn Davis Walmack. Hello, laughers. I'm excited and delighted to bring to you today Stacy, Ray, and Chris from One Tribe Farm. I actually met them at the Squash Fest last year when I was hosting it, and we made an instant connection. Chris is a Fort Defiance native and a Marine vet, and he leads the land and animal management on the farm. Stacy Ray is an integrative nutritional health coach, and together they have joined forces since they fell in love in 2015 to provide restful and restorative experiences for the visitors who come to the farm and that much more. Please welcome Stacy Ray and Chris. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> So much fun. I can't. I, this is, we have known each other less than a year, but I feel like we've known each other for a lifetime, don't you? It feels like a very long time. Absolutely. In a great way. It's like you're my sister from another, mo- another mother, but we're very Ultra. different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we're very different. I don't know anything about farming, and I call you my new hippie friend. <laughs> Well, I love it. It takes the diversity to make everything beautiful. (laughs) I agree. I couldn't agree more. I wanted to start with you, Chris. I know that you're a marine vet and that you have some experience with a farm, but you've transitioned now out of being, you know, being a marine. What drew you back to farm life? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, Well, there was an internal colony. Um, early on around, I guess, 2013, I was, uh, on a healing journey. Um, and I had a calling to get the farm. Uh, so that's when that was acquired. Um, it wasn't until really in 2015 when Stacy and I met, um, that we, uh, well, all the way to what it is now. Um, did I answer your question? That's when you found out about Joel Salatin. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Um, the cool factor for me with the farming was when I saw um, how Joel Salton of Polyface Farm um, ran his operation. That's when farming became cool mm. and, uh, a whole new level and inspirations and motivations were aplenty. And um, through practical application, that means taking these farming systems and, and applying them to the best that we could. Um, all for land wellness, animal wellness, people wellness. Um, so it has a nice big circle that, but it, um, yeah, it's a, a, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's more of a kind of a farm to table philosophy, right? Or that's, yeah, a of, clean and transparent yeah. food system. So there's no keep out signs, anything to that nature um, for the public, for the consumer to, see in every aspect how the animal um, is raised, treated, what it's fed, what's not on it, you know, antibiotic free, no vaccines, anything that goes for meat consumption, um, never has anything in it or on it is, um, is what we for. So normal. <laughs> normal. As a yeah, I don't say, I don't say the O word or anything like that. I just say normal. Oh, that O word being organic. Organic. Okay. I'm organic, you know, but yeah. You know. <laughs> We're all organic. Marketing ploys. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> so, somehow, somehow yeah. we, we got here. <laughs> somehow. Now, Stacy, you, uh, where are you from? Stacy Ray, where are you from? I'm from the mountains of West Virginia. That's yeah, right. my grandparents had a farm up there that we spent a lot of time on. Okay, where now I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. So where in West Virginia? I'm a Beckley girl. Beckley, nice. Honey, way down there in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's uh, mountain country right there for sure. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Now what brought you here to, you know, well, Mount Sydney? This one did. <laughs> Ah. We met online and fell in love, and um, we ended up blending our families right here on the farm. So, blending families. So, how many children do you have, Chris? 
I just have my daughter, uh, Alexandra. Um, she's 12 years old. Okay. And how about you, Stacey Ray? How many children did you bring to the I brought four to the table. <laughs> um, I have a 20-year-old, 19, 15, and 14-year-old. Are any of those, I mean, uh, 19, are they all on the farm with you? No. My okay. daughter, Bella, she's 20. She's in California. Well, she'll be 20 this year. Um, Chance, my second oldest son, lives close. Olivia lives with me, and she is very 15 and not the farmer girl just yet. And um, my youngest son is in Pittsburgh with his father. Okay. Okay. So you have some of the flock there. Yeah. Some of the flock. Some of the flock. I've been to your farm and it does feel very peaceful and wonderful. It's really an amazing place that you guys have. Now, I think you're welcome. Now, I thought originally you had 342 acres, but I was just there last week and you announced that you bought more farmland. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, okay. uh, so altogether, ideally we'll be managing just under 700 acres. Wow. All to which that we want to go through the diversified farming concept um, okay. and uh, be uh, clean and transparent foods. And that farm that you now, the, the additional acres are adjacent to the property, right? So you're not like going to 10 or everything is in away. Okay. with proximity. Right. And then the housing on that specific property is where we'll put our work exchanger housing. Um, and, and since we can't, you know, pay every uh, employee full salary, this and that, if we can house and we can feed and offer an experience or, well, there's some reason that somebody wants to be there, but knowledge gained or experience gained as well. And, and that's our relationship with uh, the people that um, come through our work program. And we're trying to grow that more so to where there's job opportunities and growth. So those same people um, could put a percentage of profit in their pocket as well, um, or even take on a manager responsibility and if you're managing it and facilitating operations, then obviously you get more of a percentage. So nice. these are different things we're working on to have an employee base or what you can determine as a, a community. Nice. I like that. Many hands make light work. We want to work hard, of course, and get that done and then also be able to enjoy ourselves and have leisure time. So on wow. the design. All in the design. Life's a balance, right? Right. <laughs> At least we hope so. We got to work on it. Some of us. I'm not mentioning any names, Don Womack. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you just did the work exchange, but I wanted to talk about um, the regenerating the earth and ourselves. I don't understand what that means. I noticed that, you know, that was a description on your website, what you do. Soil and souls. Yeah. I, can you elaborate, please? So through healthy farming practices, you can build soil. You can actually improve your landscape and for the better, whether it be more diverse uh, vegetations that are growth that to which the animal consumes. And then the person consumes that, you know, that animal. So you have a big healthy circle as far as um, as that goes. So land management is very important because that leads to the animal management as well, which in return, if we're we're um, doing this for meat consumption, which is heavily what we are. Um, then when the person eats that, it's um, had an extremely healthy lifestyle. Mm. Um, the land was also cared for. So each step of the, the process, you know, it's, it's about taking care of, making better. Um, More natural process. Too much there. <laughs> no. Well, in, yeah. in regenerating ourselves, <clears throat> excuse oh, yeah. me. A lot of that goes back to what I do as an integrative health coach. Um, the word healthy is such a broad spectrum word, but a lot of times we forget that, you know, the mind and the spirit also need to be healthy alongside the body. So you can farm this amazing, beautiful, clean food, and you can eat all of this healthy food that you want to. But if you're going to a job that creates stress and anxiety, or if you're, involved in a relationship that is not, like, how healthy are you in a wholesome way? Like all mind, body, spirit parts of you. Mm -hmm. So working the land and 
being with the animals, that rejuvenates some part of the soul, the human spirit. Um, And it's kind of hard to put into words because it's just kind of like an evolution that you go through. It's um, like I've had many days when I'm struggling with something out on the farm, but I'm digging holes and I'm planting flowers. And it's like I have these aha moments. Like I get to change and learn how to be a part of this whole interconnected system that we're a part of. And it just kind of helps elevate the thought process around life in general and what healthy really means and finding that balance in your life in all different areas to create the wholesome, healthy feeling. By connecting in the natural habitat around us. and Symbiotic relationship with nature. I got to do a little bit more of that. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'll put you to work. <laughs> by design, we're supposed to be outside a lot, you know? We are, um, yeah. One of the main things that, well, we used to do was how do we feed ourselves, right? So a lot of the things that we did involved, you know, uh, harvesting food, this, that. But now out of convenience, well, you can go to the store and different things. So you've taken, in my opinion, a whole portion of what we're naturally meant to do away, because we're supposed to be in the sun, it would be nice to go frolic and and pick things from bushes and trees. You know, and <laughs> he's busy. <laughs> I see. I, he, I hear. <laughs> well, it's all. What are we really sp- sp- supposed to do in this right. world? And yeah. then, how did you design your own life? Mm-hmm. Because I think uh, a lot of stuff is a choice. Now, if you're in big society system, and of course you have to have money. To live in that you know the system like this, well, you're going to have to work a lot, and then food comes out of convenience. That's really not that realistic. But being aware of it, and then ideally, hopefully, making healthier or better decisions for yourself. You know, as far as what you eat, because far what you eat, early sayings, what you put in your body make you feel better. It can make you feel worse. Well, overworking yourself and you're stressed and you're this. Maybe you could switch up your design. That doesn't mean we don't work hard and uh, you know and, and get stressed. <laughs> It's just when the sun hits my face, there's something unspeakable that happens. Mm. When I'm caring for animals, I cannot, I could be depressed or something, not care too much about myself, but it seems to be that I always care about the animals, I always care about the land. And there's a great appreciation and a value there mm-hmm. to which draws me there continuously. And I think that has a very, um, uh, it's very beneficial to me personally um, to be a caretaker um, in this way. So it's, it sounds like from the experience, you all feel internally centered and balanced from the work that you do. If Absolutely. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Like attuned. Att- attuned? Uh, yeah, attuned with uh, nature and ah. all within it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my degree from WVU didn't teach me that word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, now, with these animals that you manage, you know, um, you because you're doing that, it's, it's, it's more than that. You actually provide products that people meet products and eggs, too. Right. That people beef, can pork, chicken, eggs, honey. Um, we run an all grass system with the beef. So they're on a rotational grazing or an intensified rotational grazing uh, mob stocking where you're mobbing them all together. And uh, that's for land regenerative purposes as well. Um, and then if you can put carbon on the on the soil, any car, you know, carbon material, uh, straw, wood chips, hay, um, if you can spread carbon, that's how you build soil. OK, very key, key there um, and finding out the ways and uh, methods that you can um, as a person collect carbon and put that carbon back. We can collect carbon through all our bedding and different things like that. Clean out and run it through a composting system, and then send it right back out in the field. You might have trailed. You did trail a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Which way you we, want to go? <laughs> because we do what we do, we're able to supply the community with all grass-fed beef, oh. um, pork, chicken, eggs, and honey. Those are our staples. Um, now, in the farm store. We can take the lard from the pigs and make soap. And then we take the tallow from the the beef fat and make candles. Um, So we try to take whatever we can create on the farm to be able to give back. Okay. And 
And that farm store is in, kind of inside the one of the homes on the. For now, it is. It's at the farmhouse. Um, if you see a little yellow house, um, the farm store is right in the downstairs of that home. Uh, that's going to change hopefully soon this year, and we'll get it out of the house. But um, for now, it works. It works. it works. And people can also order food online and we deliver if they're local within a certain range. Um, but yeah. And soon uh, pick up in uh, Verona. Pick up. Uh, pick up location. In oh, Verona. Okay. Yeah. Make it more convenient um, yeah. for people to do the uh, online ordering. Um, okay. and well, the one piece that I wanted to add on to that one, sure. that one thing I trailed on about <laughs> it's was, all good. An, was animals migrate. Animals move. Man makes animal not move, puts them in a pen or whatever. Whatever your system is, if you can have a system of rotation or a system of movement, which mimics a migratorial herd in a sense, then you're allowing your land to regenerate. Instead of just beating and wearing down one area, you move those animals off. And depending on the animal type, um, there's a certain number of days that you can leave them off of that to which it will regenerate. Just for example, the cows is 45 days which during the spring and summer, the heavy growth season, when they we make a rotation around through our farm, at least on uh, um, it'll be at minimum 45 days before those cows go back on that same piece. When they do get back there, it'll be lush and diversified. Uh, okay, so you're moving, you're moving the animals on different parts of the farm through the seasons. Right. To, to so each farm move. is more okay. intensified or less intensified. And by that, I mean... Um, on one farm, the cows are moved every day into smaller areas, concentrating the nutrients out of the back end. Then we have the egg mobile. The chickens come in and we bring them in three days behind the cow's rotation because that's when the fly larva is active in the feces. So the chicken, if, if you sometimes stimulate, you know, a little feed on a patty or stuff, but usually the chickens will go and eradicate all the larvae in the feces and spread the feces. You're doing this all for a reason, and uh, basically you're concentrating the nutrients in specific areas and uh, with the cow movements. And this makes your land more stimulating and more growth, more diversified, and you keep this going for years and years and years. And if you can deploy carbon, um, whether it's uh, you know uh, some kind of compost operation that you have in mass, well, then you can keep Ready, you can spread those nutrients back out onto your own land and you have this big healthy circle. So uh, there's actually a lot of a lot of efforts in different ways, but it's giving the animals jobs and making sure that they're they're moving. From the move, not be stagnant. Okay, I'm gonna trust you okay. all on the execution <laughs> of that. Well, <laughs> versus <I'm> me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that sounded fantastic. But I was oh, like, okay, <laughs> sometimes I trail. So oh, I thought it was great. I'm, I'm right. learning. I'm learning a lot here. It's more involved than I I realized. Right, and yeah. each um, uh, same with pigs. Pigs are great stimulators. If you use them appropriately, you can improve the landscape. You can make okay. it more um, fruitful. Basically, um, you can take dead, stagnant areas, and you can create life. In return is food for them and food for other animals, and then we eat the animal and that I see. So Which that keeps going. All goes back to the regenerating soul part of it. Because mm -hmm. when you learn how to function as a part of the ecosystem and do things that help the animals do their best instead of trying to hammer fist it and dictate it, you become in essence a greater whole of that thing that you're creating. You know, the the managing of the animals and stuff, it helps you realize how connected you are to this. And it's just elevating, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Polyface Farms has um, the farming systems that are like, it's a guideline to follow, basically. All the information is out there. And that's the key word to search is Polyface Farm. <laughs> Polyface Farms. <laughs> yeah. Which is uh, uh, on the other side of Stanton, Virginia in Swope. All right. Oh, Virginia. So uh, best farm go around as well. <laughs> we go every year. Well, we started. <laughs> you think he was farming Polyface. <laughs> but he learned a lot from Polyface. He did. And we are so grateful. And I yeah. gotta tell you, Joel's just a really cool soul. He just offers knowledge. Unlike you just gotta have 
the weather all to go out and be like, I can do this too. I can start small and I yeah. can do this. I can take care of myself. I can take care of my family. Yeah. Yeah. He paid it forward. It sounds like to me. And, Absolutely. And class a, act. Class act. And you're actually grooming into being able to pay it forward to additional I, I, people. You know? I, absolutely. As uh, um, the more you utilize these systems and then uh, get better in your own right or knowledgeable, which takes will take a long time, right? You yep. know? Yeah. Well, not so much. We have a lot of things on the calendar <laughs> oh, right, <yeah. laughs> this coming year. Um, you know, we're going to start offering some cooking classes. Um, oh, wow. Cool. I'm gonna there's going to be Right. There's already a permaculture design course planned for this year that's hosted by our neighbor, um, Trevor of Shenandoah Permaculture Institute. So there's all kinds of opportunity for us as a very young farm already, just in these short couple of years to already bring people in and say, hey, did you know about this? You want to find this out, you know? So, yeah. And to talk about the systems that we utilize mm -hmm. and uh, spreading. It's like reseeding or pollinating. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of food, which is one of my favorite topics, you guys have community dinners out there sometimes. Mm -hmm. When do those happen? What does that look like? Are they inside, outside, both? Um, well, last year was our first year doing that, and that literally came out of COVID. We weren't renting either of our properties because of COVID. So we thought, you know what? We, we can be outside. We had a chef come in, and he prepared meals, and we had music, and we just put people outside on the farm six feet apart, you know, safely mm -hmm. to enjoy those meals. Um, and so this year, we landed on something with you. <laughs> well, didn't we ever? <laughs> didn't we ever? Um, so last year, it was a simple little dinner with some music. And then this year, um, on the second Friday of every month, beginning in June, running through October, you will be out there with comedy. And we have music lined up for all of those already. Um, food lined up for those and still working on the beer and stuff part. But yeah, that's it's going to come yeah. together. It's going to be a blast. We're gonna it's going to be so fun. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Outdoor summer fun series. I'm You're ready. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> we are kind of a funny farm anyway. <laughs> We're yeah. all a little strange in our own right. So. <laughs> yes, I would agree with that. I just look in the mirror and tell myself that <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to bring some amazing comics out there. So the lineups won't always look the same. People are familiar with X2 Comedy know that, but they're always going to have a great time. Yeah. And the music. I'm so excited. excited. I am too. I am too. It's a great farm. I can't wait for that. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, let's see if I forgot anything. Uh, uh, uh. No, I think I did pretty good there. <laughs> I think you did too. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I, I don't know how I did. I, I don't <laughs> oh, know. Oh, please. You did great. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Don't this overthink is... it. I do that too much. This... I mean, it's, it's just kind of not our thing. We, we're we usually just dirty out there playing in the, the animals and things. Like, this is kind of new to us. So, you know, to have to actually sit still and think about what you do. And why it's you like do. herding cats right now. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Ah, that's fantastic. Well, this has been super great, you guys. If people want to find out more about One Tribe Farm, maybe get some meat products and eggs, how can, and maybe tickets even to the summer series, how can they best do that? Absolutely. You're going to want to visit onetribefarm.com. They're on the website. We will have upcoming events where you can purchase your tickets. Um, you can also rent either one of our properties. Um, and the what else did you ask me about? The uh, food? Yes, the food. And then I want to come back to something I just thought about. So, oh, okay. but the food. Yes. Yeah. So you want to go to onetryfarm.com. And we're also on Instagram at one Tribe Farm. Um, and we have a Facebook page. So social media website or you can just stop by the farm too the stores open we're out there every day very open and 
just stop by and see us. We like people. (laughs) Yes, they do. And we will put their website in the show notes. And just to be clear, it's the number one tribefarm.com spelled out versus. uh, We tried the other one taking. Ah, well, poo. This, and then this is what was meant to be. It this is. is what you That's had. how I looked at it. That's right. But I did remember before we like close out and say bye to our listeners, one of the coolest things that you have that we didn't talk about are those sweet little mini cabins. Oh, yeah. Where the outdoor summer fun series will be. And there's an outdoor fire pit there. And so anybody that got one of those cabins would have, you know, this this event's going to go from 730, I believe it was. Oh, seven to 11, right? Seven to 11, yes. Between the comedy show and the music and the food and all of that. So if you get a sweet cabin, how many of them do you have? Uh, We have 10 micro sleeping cabins. They're all primitive, no electric, no water, but there is a bathhouse with outdoor showers and two toilets, two sinks. But each cabin um, houses a queen size bed and a sweet little piece of furniture and its own little porch you can hang out on. Um, But yeah, they're really sweet. They are adorable. They're glamping. It's the Hillbilly (laughs) Hotel. (laughs) It totally is. I don't think we'll use that, but I like saying it. Could be your tagline. Uh, oh, they've been they've been called a lot of things. They've been called huts and storage love shacks and <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. One yeah, but I think that would be, you know, you, there how many again? Eleven? There's ten of them. Ten, I'm sorry. So there are only ten of them, but what a cool experience for one of those summer series nights is to just get snag one of those while you can oh absolutely snag it and then our shelf will cook you breakfast the next morning if you want (laughs) no yeah we won't do that to anyone but yeah that'd be really cool and then they if they if they want to they can sit on there's a little bit of a deck on those cabins right right there's a little front porch on music yeah Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and while farming operations are commencing uh we become part of the show Yes. Oh, the workers that, do. Those who work the farm, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. So you can that see, out. right? So you can uh, guests can see the uh, the system of movement or uh, any aspect of the farm. Um, the next first, day, firsthand. The next, the next day. day. The next day. Oh yeah, I wasn't trying to reference. Oh, did I do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was just clarifying. That is not happening at eleven o'clock at night. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I we like, have. Yeah, we have to work the farm. <laughs> so when guests are there, basically we become part of the show. Is what I got I you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, you did. You know, because I produce the shows, I was like, wow, that'll be my yeah. mix can have some fun with that. <laughs> 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 so that's good to get some clarification here on the planning. But you know, they still might have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> go for it <laughs> okay, good. well you guys have been absolutely fantastic listeners i hope you got a lot out of this i i i did and if you want to know more you want to meet stacy ray and chris you want to check out their farm get their products check out the events then oh they're so cute they just kissed for those of you listening on the audio version only <laughs> It was adorable. Gonna make the sound effect again? No, we're good. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, You guys are such a joy to hang out with. Every time I do, I just feel blessed and my spirit uplifted. So I appreciate your time for coming on here today. Thank you so much, Stacey Ray and Chris. Thank Thank you. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. Yes, same here. All right, we're gonna say bye to the listeners, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So check back for another uplifting episode. Come to an X2 Comedy show or let us bring a show to you. To find out more, head to X2Comedy.com. Be sure to share us with a friend. Until next time, cheers.